Got to go. What? Yeah. This is the start. Hi. My name is Chris, and uh, welcome to One Page Story Extravaganza live stream, episode one hundred and thirty-nine. That's more. That's more than I've got fingers and toes. Okay. So a uh, couple things today. I'm going to show you our page. This uh, baby. That's baby on the screen today. By the way, for those that are wondering. Um, let's, uh, let's switch up some cameras for a sec. Uh, boy, there she is even bigger. Look at that girl. All right. So, uh, today's page, today's page is one second, too many, uh, too many things going on at once in my head. All right. So there, there's today's page. Now I did three pages this weekend, but I only posted one on Instagram and Facebook. And the other two are on my Patreon and will be on my Substack uh, after the stream's over here. And so because of that, uh, you know, there's uh, little bits little bits and extras for people to see. The quick show is that I did this page and I did this page. So, uh, yeah, but those are available to see on my Patreon. And otherwise, it's... Uh, it's a secret. So, uh, yeah. Well, I'll leave this up for a second. Anyways, let me tell you what we're doing. Uh, my name is Christopher Runsman. Um, people give me suggestions and ideas, and I write and illustrate a one-page story every day. And so at this point, we're on 194. And it's day 198. So... You know, I'm not going to hit the 200 unless I do six pages tonight, and that's probably not happening. So, uh, anyhow, uh, this is our latest page. Um, this one was a lot of fun. This is a conspiracy tack board. Um, so, there's all kinds of, of nuttiness on there, and of course, over top of that, I've got a narrative structure for you to follow. Um, this was fun, suggested by uh, Joshua Kimball, uh, and I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. I did it with mixed media, pencils, pens, uh, paint, uh, ink, Pencil crayon, just just having a ball. And then the little uh, inserts are in pencil and pen. So, and then the text is all digital. So it's a pretty mixed mixed bag here for for pages. Uh, it, yeah. So I really enjoyed doing that. And you know, it's the kind of thing where when you're in the course of doing something, you just go with that energy. Um, the originals for this are going to be on uh, our. Uh, Sweating buckets in my hat today for some reason. Well, it's because I've been shampoo vacuuming my house this morning. So, because you know, you got to sometimes cleans up. So, uh, my little stains, you know, spilled drinks this weekend from grandkids being over. So, uh, I picked up something new this week. I picked up a, a jelly roll. I don't know, uh, or jelly, jelly plate, sorry. And I'm going to talk to you about that in a second. But if you want to see the originals for the pages that I post on here, like the ones that I flashed up on the screen a minute ago and the one that I'm showing now, uh, they're available to see with the original work, the finished page, the original work, and some of the ideation is, uh, is all on my Patreon. And I post that there every day. And then I just post an image up on Instagram and Facebook. And eventually that's going to have to disappear because, um, you know, something to do with, Publisher's advisement. So, uh, you know, for now, the, but the book will be available at the same time. So, um, and then on uh, my Substack, every week I post all the pages of the previous week. And so that's coming up tonight. So uh, that's a lot of fun. It's just the page of the suggestion, the page of suggestion and, and the medium, sorry. So, yeah. But if you've got a one page idea or suggestion, please feel free to put it in the chat or in the comments or whatever. Um, but uh, we're going to get cracking on today's page. Today's page is Junkyard Sandwich Shop. That's the suggestion we've got for today. Uh, so I'm going to kick that up on the screen for a moment. There we go. So I'm trying to get everything sorted with the camera placement and things like that. But Junkyard Sandwich Shop is uh, is the page. Now, before I get too far ahead, I picked up something this weekend when I was out and about with the grandkids, and that is what's called a jelly plate. And uh, mine looks like this. I clean it notoriously every time I'm done. I don't want this thing to look as pretty as can be for as long as can be, right? I've seen some ones, some of them that are kind of crazy colored, but 
So this is a, what's called a jelly plate, and it's a, uh, you know, I don't know what it's made of. <laughs> my, my granddaughter told me, believe it or not, and I can't remember. So I picked this up, and uh, I got down to it. Now, I started off by doing a couple things like this, uh, just, just trying to figure out how it goes and using... And that's the roller page where, where I clean out my brush. I've actually already used that in the back uh, background of a page. So this is my first attempt. It's terrible. It's terrible. Hi, Chris. How you doing? Chris said hi. Hi, everybody else that's here. So this is my first uh, attempt. At, uh, you know, it's terrible. So then I got uh, a little bit better by carving some images into it. And, uh, and then I started figuring out, oh, I get it, right? So once I figure out how to uh, find the right kind of image to put on it, and I started getting more results out of it, and uh, and then you know, so now I'm I'm doing this. So now it's I've got to figure it out. Um, it's a spaceship, Didi. If you're hi, Didi, walking aboard. Uh, yeah. So so this is the point I'm at now with getting the finished results that I'm chasing. Um, but I'm never really going to use this uh for finished graphic images i'm just not that's not my intention uh and it's uh my intention is more for background stuff i'm going to use some of the things that i put together with the the jelly plate some of this fun information like this it's not too dissimilar from the same way that i i do this with ink on paper and so approaching the jelly plate now i will do some finished things but i will put a little more little more into it like i'll probably do more to define the the rocket ship here etc cetera, etc cetera. um but now that i've got some idea of how to handle it i can take these wonderfully ridiculous bits of information that are in the back and i'm going to draw a page right over top of this because uh that's how i do so you know, i'm missing some stuff here i'm sorry for that I have one. I've never used it. I suggest you try it, Chris, because it's fun. I'm really enjoying it. I didn't. I didn't know that I necessarily would, but I'm a cheapskate, and I spent uh, 50 Canadian on this. And if I'm spending 50 Canadian on something, I'm going to use it. So, uh, Diddy says they're fun. Yes, indeed, they are. I use them for collage. Nice collage papers. Oh, of course. And Chris says your collage art is awesome, Diddy, which it is. He says thanks. This is very nice. Um, yeah. So, uh, so this is this is what I'm going to be doing today, is that I'm taking today's one page suggestion and I'm going to do a page on it. Now, just just to to give up some secrets. So this is the page that I roll out my brayer on, and I've had a brayer for for years, right? And uh, but you roll out the ink, you put it on the jelly plate, yeah put the magazine down there's a whole bunch of better tutorials than i would ever give you so the brayer plate or the brayer uh paper that i had i uh, i'm gonna jump over to this again and uh, the brayer paper is the background of this that's the background of this page and then the yellow piece of paper and I'll show you that again. So this yellow piece of paper now, there's the brayer or there's the brayer paper, and that's the Bill Clinton page. And then there's the yellow page, and the yellow page looks like that. So I've already utilized these already. So the two pages that are just on my Patreon and my Substack have already got uh, jelly plate backgrounds. So you know, good afternoon, Philip. How you doing, sir? So that's the start of it. And uh, now I'm at a point where, because I'm figuring out how it works, good news, happy news. So, but this is uh, this is fun to get to, I'll, I'll be honest, to get to this stage here and to be able to have an image that I can carve out and to use some some stencils and to, to you know, use uh, some sponges and to tamp uh, paint through those stencils and to, to give some some information stuff like that and the fact that I can transfer that over it's almost like all of your underpaint it's almost like all of your 
base colors that you've got to turn around putting on a surface and it's and it's this can be this belabors process of filling it all in whereas you just roll it on to the jelly plate and uh stick it down and so i have uh some canvases that i'm working on for some commissions and i'm going to be using the jelly plate on those because because we'll see how that goes um i i just like the idea of it i just like the idea of being able to put some of this uh, random information in the background of other images so you know so this is uh this is the progress of where we're at today but uh, i'm going to use these pieces of paper and uh turn them on their side just like i used the last two pieces of paper and use these as backgrounds for a uh a finished image and i'm going to use them again but i'm actually going to draw specifically on them this time uh now i've scanned these or i haven't scanned these but that's okay we're just going to draw straight to them this uh, today you know and i've also got this cat so i think that this is what i'm going to start with today is this cat here and uh and then like i said before i i will make more complex images with the jelly plate akin to how other people would, would do it but um uh, for me, for the most part, it really is just that background information because I'm quite, I'm quite pleased with, uh, I'm, where did I go? Like I'm quite pleased with that, the fact that it all, all that information and, and I paint loose, like really translucently over top of it for the colors and it lets all this crazy information pop through in their faces. And uh, I gotta admit, I kind of like that, so. Yep. All right. Uh, I'm missing a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, there's no Siri spelling errors today. That's how it would look if I type it. <laughs> Hi, Jim. Hi. Uh, Brayer's paper, Brayer papers look interesting. I think that we, you, you Brayer the color onto the pad or onto the jelly plate and then uh, flip it over and stamp it onto some paper. You know, and depending on the pressure you put down and the, depending on the placement of it, you can get some ridiculous things. But this is literally just cleaning off what was on the plate because I realized that image didn't take it all and I just tried to squish it off. And this is what I got. So you can get some really fun results. But thank you, Chris. It's nice of you. Um, he says, hey, and everybody says, hey. Okay. So, yeah, thank you so much to uh, people like Devin Rex and DD. For, you just keep showing me tools that I just, I'm adding stuff to the studio. Anyways, pretty soon, pretty soon, I'm not going to be able to move in this place. That's not true. It was a little bit larger. So, so this is today's paper that uh, I'm going to work on today's image with, which was suggested by Justin Stewart, who uh, joined with us on Friday when we were doing the... Uh, conspiracy tack board page so so thank you for the suggestion justin stewart and this is what we're going to get a crack a lacking on today uh, uh oh j boys what's up crazy kids there we go okay so today's suggestion junkyard sandwich stop shop you know words are hard so that's that's my basic walkthrough for the jelly plate progress for me and I, I feel like I got it to a place where I can put together images on it and transfer them out of uh, magazines and do things like that typeface and and some rudimentary images which just l largely is background whatnots and uh, and we'll go from there okay so I am going to draw on this jelly plated paper now and uh, so the idea here with uh, today's suggestion of junkyard sandwich shop you know, let's start with a junkyard, right? Does it make sense? That makes some sense. Um, hey, we were hanging out with Philip not 12 hours ago. True, but 12 hours prior, we did just attend the broadcast of our brother Philip. <laughs> That's your maniacs. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, I, I'm just going to get into it. Uh, I said that today's day was a ballpoint pen day. Um, the surface is modified jelly plating. So, yeah, I'm having fun today, folks. I got um, 
a lot of the pages posted from from this weekend's uh, work. I don't. So my new theory is this: I post Monday through Friday for all the pages that we're we're doing here. I carry over the page from Friday onto Monday and post it for then. But I think those Saturdays and Sunday pages that I'm still doing are, and I think I'm at 194 for the year. So, yay. Um, but I think that the weekend pages that I'm still doing, I really got to be more considerate of my, my patrons that are on, on uh, Patreon and uh, give them a little bit something extra for being such sports. So I'm only going to post those weekend pages on the Patreon and on the Substack. The Substack thing doesn't cost anything, but uh, it's just the whole week's pages in one spot, right? So it's, you know, just this list, like just this sort of tractoring list, like a newsletter. You get it as an email. So uh, feel like you need to use your Logitech download for camera settings. Now we doth attend Christopher while well, elucidating images of our own within our sanctums. Yay, very early, my good sir. For sooth. For sooth and King Henry. I, uh, I was uh, watching a stream, and uh, one of it was so one of the guys. They're comparing Star Trek and Star Wars. And one of the guys does the dumbest quote I've ever heard. And the other guy has to correct them. That the Star Wars guy had to correct the Star Trek guy because he said, I think it was Christopher Plummer in uh, whatever Star Trek, the undiscovered country that said, cry havoc and let's let the dogs of war. And the other guy goes, Shakespeare, dude. That's Shakespeare. <laughs> but that's my favorite uh, Elizabethan Victorian uh, um, well, at least a bit in the speech, I guess it is. Um, that might be, oh, I'm sorry, I missed that. Hath, hark the mark making Christopher lay bare and paper doth and preth upon thee. <laughs> you guys are nuts. I love it. Okay, so I'm drawing uh, a junkyard, right? This, so that's the whole idea is that why not start off with establishing a context or a narrative. It's a junkyard sandwich shop. So um, if you ever have an opportunity uh, at the American Society of Illustrators, Bill uh, Siankovich, who I've shown books of, and I will show our three books of the day. I'm going to get into it a little bit before I, I, uh, I show them, just because, just because. And uh, I wanted to talk about this jelly plating stuff at the start here. But I will show you our three books of the day. Okay, anyhow, Bill Sienkiewicz was on the Society of Illustrators and he gave a tutorial on painting and the, the mixed media approach he has with inks and how he goes about doing it. And he painted this junky old truck, this old chef, and uh, it was fun. It was fun. Uh, yeah, I appreciated it very much, but you got to take a look at that if you want a tutorial on uh, on some of the different things you can do with different mark making medium. But the speed that he works at, uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy how fast that guy draws. And he's drawing this old truck, right? So it's like he's just getting it down, just knocking it out and having a ball while doing it. You got to appreciate that. They, uh, them, they're uh, picture making there, you know, they can get uh, complex at times, you know. So one of the things I like about the jelly plated images is that uh, it, there's all these wonderful little textures and things in it, but I, I don't think it's going to be um, very good at allowing certain kinds of mark making tools on it. Uh, I think that uh, like pencils out, pencil crayons just out completely. You're not going to be able to to do any pencil crayon work over this because it's it's acrylic, right? And while you might be able to do some highlighting with the acrylic, you're never really going to be able to put some marking down, right? Some proper marking down. I'm trying to keep up with stream. 
Uh, oh, Beauty's given some nice advice. It's super cool. <laughs> I think we all have to speak in old English in chat. Oh my goodness, I'm worried about you. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, he's working on uh, uh, talking with. Oh, it's Justin. Welcome aboard, Justin. J Stu is uh is Justin Stewart a uh, an official J boy at this point with uh with Josh and Jim or is this uh, exclusive snobbery on their part that's keeping him from uh, being amongst the in crowd of J people? And I've got a theme song for you guys too. If this is your shtick, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna be the J boys from now on. I think you should co-op uh, a television commercial jingle and uh, introduce yourself as ch 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 boys like that. Because if you don't, you're just missing out. You're missing out. Oh, boy, he's in. He's in the club. I mean, oh, my gosh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Philip. <laughs> The power of three, it's a magic number. I expect you guys to do dance routines. Now that's just me. Maybe you don't want to do dance routines. Maybe you just want to get dressed up in flamboyant outfits and parade about. But I think there should be singing and dancing involved. Just me. Okay, so I'm... Throwing down some uh, marks here. I'm putting together a uh, a few vehicles lying in a uh, a junkyard, and so this will sort of set a uh, a tone. It'll set a a direction for. Our narrative by just starting right, right off the top in the junkyard so that you know that that's where this sandwich shop is going to be. Um, I really like how some of these crazy bits of detail are coming through. Um, it's it's fun and it gives it a, 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 a greater complexity off the hop. And I like that. I like that largely because it makes my job easier. Boy, he put a lot of information down quick. No, it was on the paper. Where do you get such magical paper? I made it. It's this uh, heavy uh, piece of cardstock, green cardstock that I put the image on. I, I think it took the uh, the jelly plating really well, and uh, which is really fortunate for me because it's there now. <laughs> oh, Josh, feeling a wee bit of the British influence, are we? Um, do you like the jelly jelly plate paper results, Christopher? I don't have any jelly plate paper. Um, so uh, I didn't come with any. It was just just this, just the, the plate itself. So um, I'm using uh, different kinds of cardstock. And uh, it's turning out. I mean, the, the colors are just hopping right off it. And, uh, and yet at the same time, it has that, you know, uh, 70s, 80s kind of weird focus on the images. I kind of like that. Oh, you may, mate. Jelly plate. No, I mean the pulls from your plate. Oh, I'm really enjoying them. I really, uh, I really am enjoying them. Uh, next one you should do on jello plate. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I, I really enjoy these results because it gives me, uh, I mean, there's the crisp image stuff that I can get, and then there's the really just modeled nonsense image for the background, and then even the uh, page where I roll my brayer over it in order to get the excess uh, paint off of it, uh, I'm going to use that too. So I'm really pleased with how much you get out of so little. <laughs> So if anybody hasn't considered doing a jelly plate, I think you should. Uh, and also, if you're considering doing a jello plate, I think you should do that as well. But uh, don't put any paint on it. Just eat the jello. It's a very different thing. All right. So um, so what I'm 
just trying to get down is a lot of the sort of basic information for our junkyard scene. So excuse me for, I'm trying to hurry across this and, and get enough stuff down that we can move on into more of the narrative. But whatever it is you're working on in, in one of these instances, you got to make sure that you've established a kind of, hey, here's where we're at for the people that are reading your work so that they, they're in on the story. They're in on whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. So I'm just drawing a bunch of mixed vehicles and I'm gonna come in with the white in just a sec. Um, Josh, uh, Didi's asked if you've used jelly plate. It, you know, even at the very least, it may be something fun for you to do with your, with your, uh, with your son because it's one of those things that wow once you figure it out you are off to the races and i'm seeing some really fantastically complex and interesting things that people are making with theirs uh my initial intention and i think that the one that i'm really going to hold on to is uh, this sort of uh, an aesthetic for for drawing images on a and B, um, taking pieces of information like, like this rocket ship and putting that in the background of whatever canvas images that, that I'm working on. I've got a painting up here of, uh, well, I don't want to say in case they're here, but uh, for somebody. And uh, I really wish I'd done, I'd learned about this just in advance so I could put some of that stuff within the background. But I may well still do it anyways, because uh, I'm complex. I'm a complex guy. That's why my friends call me Whiskers. You know, so. Okay, what am I missing out here? Uh, so many cool effects. Yeah, you can get so many great effects out of it. And Dee says, uh, smack our hands again. Thank you, Dee. Jelly plate makes for a great wobble effect on art. Oh, yeah. Uh, it looks rad for sure, Josh says, and Ndidi says, perfect paper for your way of drawing, Christopher. Thank you, Didi, and uh, I appreciate that. Um, but uh, it's, I love what it represents, like the opportunities that it represents because, or it affords, I guess, is what I'm uh, considering. Um, because there's sort of, the, the, the wonderful thing about working in different medium and working on paper that's, you know, already been, monkeyed with like when I throw the paint or the ink on, on a surface and then have to draw traditional image flat on top of that, which you've seen me do numerous times. But the wonderful thing about that is that I find that if you're in a very measured approach to how you're working, it's probably not going to work for you. I'll be honest. But if you're in a very intuitive, hey, let's see what happens with some marks, kind of a headspace at times, try it, try out doing that because it's going to afford you opportunities of lines and direction in your compositions that you might not have considered or it may make you have value judgments along the way like i don't have to put this flat routine value down and what i mean by routine is this is black this is white you know this this flat value down to represent this piece of the image whereas it's there's this sort of wonderful sim simulated texture because of whatever the, the monkeying was done on the page before. So, you know, it's a lot of fun in that regard. Christopher is a deep, complex gentleman. He called me a gentleman. <laughs> yeah, backgrounds, exactly, yeah. Yeah, thanks, Diddy. Uh, Justin says, right on, I like some chaos and unpredictable, uh, unpredictability in my art making. Fantastic, and well, you should. I mean, not to say that it's for everybody, but if you can go with that if you can follow that and uh and not to get too constrained by it because some people that chaos is going to set them off right everybody has different approaches to how they work but if you are able to engage in that like um I mean, Didi, i'm going to use you for an example if you're still here and i'm sorry for that um but there's this fantastic thing about collage work which um which Didi is really proficient at and there's these little variables that get mixed into what you're doing because of the fact that as you're collaging across a page, 
you have covered up, incidentally covered up this part with this piece that you've put down over top, or you've now definitively changed this outlook because, um, again, an additional piece of material that's sort of inserted in. I love that. I absolutely love that. So, but it doesn't work for everybody. Some people need, I need white paper. Let me go. Stay out of the way. Give me some white paper and back it up. Yeah. So, okay. So I've uh, defined a lot with, are you working? Okay. Are you on the job here, Phil? Okay. White paper. You with us? You with us? Nope. Not. Fired. Where's my happy pen? There you go. What are you doing over there? He's happy. He's always happy to work. Some of these white pens are slackers, I'll tell you. I like I like uh, these little textures that peek through. And because this is not really opaque when you're putting jelly roll down, a lot of that, that value peeks through. And that to me is fun. You can see the green in here. You can see the fuchsia, maybe fuchsia. Just, why don't you just call it pink, weirdo? Um, I, I like how some of those values just sort of jump right out there. It's not a carish, but it kind of looks like a car. It looks like junk, pal. I thought I would leave my Monday three books from the shelf selection open and to see if there's anything, any kind of books that people would want to see. Anything specific that uh, people are interested in seeing from the old library. Because if I'm just picking, it's very clearly going to have the bias of the, the books that immediately gravitate out of my bookshelves towards towards me to, to present to you. Whereas if, if the people are saying, you got any books on this? I like bugs. <laughs> I don't have books on bugs. Actually, I might. So this, yeah, I really, I really enjoy, enjoy what the jelly plate lets me do with the paper. It's, uh, it's kind of nice. Makes me look like I know what I'm doing. Okay. So, narratively, our suggestion today is junkyard sandwich shop. Our question of the day. Jim has not asked everyone yet, and uh, it's probably working. I appreciate everybody that ch checks in, by the way, when you're at work. It's really nice of you. I don't want anyone to get in trouble. I appreciate you coming by and saying hi. I was watching... Uh, Friend of everybody, one of the fibs here from from Dee Dee's channel, uh, Janet. You know, watching her do Pictionary, and she's really good at it. I'm terrible at Pictionary, terrible. Uh, and Dave McKeon, I have a I have a shelf. I literally have a shelf that is Dave McKeon. I actually uh, collect a lot. Artist sketchbooks are good. Christopher says Dee Dee, and uh, I like chaos. But I like it in moderation. Oh yeah, all this talk of collage kind of puts me in a McKeon mood. Yeah, I'll show I'll show you lots of McKeon in a second. Uh, Chris, that art that you emailed that one person has been printed and given to that person. Confirmed. Oh wow, crazy. Question of the day: Have you ever tried to break dance? I'm old, Jim. I was around in the '80s. Yes, I did. Okay, McKeon. Which ones to show you? That's the secret. Let's just start. Here's a little bit of McKeon. 
Um, just give me a second. And uh, I'm going to grab one more. And we'll start there. Okay. Now, Dave McKeon is an artist that did all of the covers for the Sandman. Did I bring anything about Sandman? Of course I did. So, um, this is my. Uh, this is. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna love this. This is Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky, and uh, it was illustrated by Dave McKeon. I get some weird books. So uh, this is, uh, it comes in a big, beautiful case that has a little case inside of it. But this is literally Dostoevsky. So if you can imagine Crime and Punishment as illustrated by an artist that's this weird. He's the guy that, uh, by the way, that did Coraline. If you've seen Coraline, that's McKeon. Um, so this is, a fantastic book. It's a huge volume. It's a beehive edition. It's pretty ding dong big. Um, but this uh, is how I reread Dostoevsky last year. Um, so I can't tell you how how full of joy I was when I saw that. Right? Okay, I'm missing stuff. Uh, all the stock of collage puts me in a keen mood. Okay, uh, I got that. Yes, the brick dance. Anybody with the brick dancing answers? Desk covers would be cool to show if you've got it. I'll show you that in a second, guys. Um, hands ago, had a moonwalk. I think I fell over. <laughs> That's the end of that. Uh, Josh, this dude's such a genius. This is one of my favorite children's books to read to my to my grandkids. It's called The Day I Swapped My Dad for Two Goldfish. It's written by Neil Gaiman. Um, and it's illustrated by Dave McKeon. And so McKeon uses... All kinds of different things that is disposable. He uses Max uh, marked up paper and overlapping pages. Um, he uses crayon and pencil, and he scribbles and in ink over top of things. He does projection over top of uh, paintings, and then he projects on a, another image over top of those, and then photographs that, and that's the presented image. Uh, and then he does some digital drawing work as well, and, and paint, traditional painting. Uh, on a printout of digital drawing, anything that you can think of about using traditional and digital together, the guys probably tried it. This is about a couple of kids, and uh, they're bored. One day my mom went out and left me at home with just my little sister and my dad. My dad sat in front of the television reading his newspaper. My dad doesn't pay much attention to anything when he's reading his newspaper. So their friend gets some goldfish, and in order to get a hold of these goldfish, he says, I'll swap you for it. And he tries to think of all the things in this world that he could swap them for. And he says, I know. I'll swap you my dad. So, and then the sister says, you're going to get in trouble. It's so good. But that's McKeon. This is McKeon's short films. 25 films on Blu-ray with an 80-page book of posters and related images. So, there's the Blu-ray. Whee! Uh... I've got Wolves in the Wall as well. That's another great one. I like all of the children's stories that they do. So this is McKeon's short movies and, and explanations and discussions on all of those. And so this is a truly mixed media artist that we're talking about. Um, and here's his book, Raptor. It's a short graphic novel. It's wonderful. It's creative and complex. And, and, uh, and then, of course, one of the earliest ones that they did together, Signal the Noise, Dave McKeon and Neil Gaiman. And uh, this is far in advance of the digital age. And uh, just the complexity of the information. Uh, this is my favorite book. My favorite book is Violent Cases by Neil Gaiman and Dave McKeon. Right? It's uh, This is about a little boy. His dad says it's time to go to bed. He... The boy tugs at his dad as he's trying to lead him up the stairs, and it dislocates his shoulder, and uh, which the dad feels absolutely horrible about. So he takes him to see a chiropractor, and uh, and this is how McKeon has illustrated this thing in ink and uh, pencil. So you can clearly see if there's a single artist that has the biggest influence on me, you just found out. So uh, 
it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. And uh, he basically gets his uh, arm adjusted by Al Capone's osteopath. And all he knows about gangsters, American gangsters, is uh, they wore big black suits, drove in big black cars, and carried violent cases. And shot people instead of Tommy guns and violent cases. So this is pictures that tick. This is all kinds of short stories in different medium of McKean's. And, uh, okay, there you go. He teaches at the London uh, School of Art. And uh, lucky the students that get to be taught by him. One last thing, and then I'm going to show you a sketchbook. I have to put all these books away after. Um, I'm not sure if I showed this one. Okay, I got a great one. I got a great one. This, uh, by the way, is Cages. Cages is a graphic novel by McKeon. It is uh, an inch and a half thick. Um, it is wonderful. It's about the limitations that we all put on our lives. I gotta show you, the, it starts off with a whole bunch of creation myths that he does, but then it starts with this, and it's one of the most beautiful openings of a book ever. So, bye Chris, thanks for coming out. It starts with the moon, a cat walks in front and past the moon. And then we cut to the cat in front of the moon on top of the rooftop, tighten in on the camera, cat looks at some birds, climbs down off the roof. What an awesome way to start a book. Now, I'm not sure, Didi, if I showed the sketchbook of James Jean. Yesterday, I showed, or Friday, I showed James Jean's work. This is James Jean's sketches. I'm not sure if I showed this or not. Now, warning, there might be some uh, exposed people parts here. So, But this is another person who tries whatever he can, throws marks on paper, and looks for things inside of that, right? Which is a really fun way to open your headspace up. Draw a deer, draw a deer from numerous angles, draw those numerous angles on top of each other. That's a fun thing. Philip says, I got a level book that feels like it's looking back at you. Josh is heading out to get lunch. Watch, watch after the fact. Show still we share love of McGeehan's work. Yeah. J Boys. But you know, Chris is on her way out too. Thanks, Chris. So this is uh James Jean. And uh well let's let's move past that. See here again is overlapping compositions. But you'll find things in that, you know, you'll find things in different marks that you put down. And I kind of like that a lot. But there's lots and lots and lots and lots. So just drawing people on the plane or the train or whatever he's on there. It's fun. There's no rules in sketchbooks. There's no rules at all. Now, the other sketchbook I want to show you is this. This is another one of my favorite books. This is The Two Worlds of Andrew Wyeth. And uh, if you're not familiar with the Wyeth families, uh, a family of artists, I think you should look them up. Uh, because... The fantasy books and pirate books and things like that that I read as a child were illustrated by his dad for the covers and spot illustrations. Um, and then, of course, the son goes on to become... Both, uh, two sons, I think, did uh, went on to become artists. The picture... I'm going to try to find it really quickly here. This is one of the really popular pieces of art. And as soon as you'll see it, you'll be like, oh, it's that guy. Yeah, of course I can't find it easily. Well, it's the picture of the lady lying in the grass and she's looking up uh, over the hill at the farmhouse. This is it. This is Wyeth. This painting here is the big popular one. And uh, 
So because of this picture about Christina, Christina's world it's called, right? This is what got him to major acclaim. But what I'm interested, this, this is his sketch for that painting. As rough and brutal as this is, the paper's all marred and messed up. He doesn't care. It's clearly got uh, bleed through from uh, drawings that were on top. Um, all of the surfaces that he works on are a mess. And yet for something about this had big influence on me. Look at this finished piece. And it started as that really rough pile of business. And so uh, he lived with this, these people, the Olsons on their farm. And so these are the, there it is. There's Christina's world, 1948. And they had no internal plumbing and they had no electricity. And they had, and this is a guy up, upscale Long Island and he goes and lives rough with these people so that he can appreciate their world with the wind blowing through the windows and everything else. But the work that he's producing from just being allowed to, to share life with them is phenomenal. You know, this is, uh, the German is about uh, Mr. Olson, the oldest one. He reflects on his time in World War I. But the, there's a sketchbook. If you are looking for an absolutely beautiful look inside the mind of an artist, that might be it. I've got the cover taped together because I love this one so much and I just don't didn't want it to break. Uh, I can try to find the ISBN. ISBN number uh, 0395270898. And the other ISBN number is 0395270804. It's an old book. There you go. Okay, there's today's books. I hope uh, people like those. That's Andrew Wyeth, by the way. Um, there's a, a few different Wyeths. And now uh, I think his daughter is doing some work in the art world. Largely, I think, trying to maintain some insight into her family's productivity over the years. So, uh, and claps for Christopher. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I love Wyeth. Absolutely love Wyeth. I think Dee Dee likes Wyeth, too. I have some, but not that one. Oh, I've got a couple more Wyeth books. I uh, I love Wyeth. But that, that specific book I got, I think I was 15. And uh, that made it through a divorce and multiple moves over my life and uh, kids and the whole bit of business. And I still got that book. I don't, you know, have enough or very much of anything at all, really, from growing up. But I got that. I'm not 15, but I was young. Okay, so some of these lines and shapes that we put down earlier, we're now throwing together and populating the background of the image. Um, if you have an opportunity to study artists like Wyeth, for anybody that's joined in with us here, if you have an opportunity to step outside of a wheelhouse, hey, you know, like let's say you do, I do very cartoony work. So therefore, I predominantly look at cartoony work. I don't, I think if you say, I, I know that if you were even to talk to, uh, 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 if you're to talk to Philip here about that, Philip doesn't just look at cartoonists only. You know, mo nobody does that in any sort of field. You, you want to look at, the larger insights through through more art than that, and well, I'm not talking out of turn, Philip, but yeah, and, and you know, you become aware and you're knowledgeable in other other fields and forms of art. Like another painter that I really really like is uh, an abstractionist named Anselm Kiefer, and I don't work anything like him. It's just there's something about is comprehension of form that I highly recommend people look into. It's just there's so much insight that can be gleaned from um, looking at others' works. There's certain artists that I have. Um, our bookshelves are, are foot and a half by foot and a half shelves. And there's certain each shelf, and, and we've got 6, 12, 18, 24, 
60 shelves of like that in in this room and with that uh i've got numerous entire blocks just dedicated to this uh single artist <laughs> so there's certain artists that stand out for me and mckeon uh, Lindsay mckay uh, alex toth i'll show you some toth tomorrow maybe um bill Siankovic. um you know it's just the, the, the top of my head I, my brain just went there you are not saying any more words Wow, Miami Vice reboot colors. I feel like it's so 80s all over again. <laughs> As Janet Jackson said, we are, in fact, the Rhythm Nation. I like Aubrey Beardsley. I liked Aubrey Beardsley when I was a teen. Those ones that we like when we're a teen, we tend to hold on to those ones. There tends to be something about how they, the impact that they had on us at probably a uh, time of, you know, mental or, or just living development you know uh for me it would have been gustav klimt uh and uh oh my goodness i'm so mad at myself uh egon sheila yeah egon sheila and and that's those the ones that got me out of the whole the Bauhaus movement you know uh which is not what beardsley is beardsley is a uh Okay, too many words are hard in my head now. Art Nouveau. Art Nouveau. I need a drink. That's what's going on. Here's to you. Yeah, like if you like Andrew Wyatt, look at what his dad did, and you'll see the sort of foundations of where he came to terms with uh, some of the marks that he would make. It's an interesting thing to see that. And I'm uh, monopolizing this time to talk about your room. It's just shellfish. <laughs> nice. Nice. Well done. Okay. So uh, let's just put a couple more cars here in the background. And then we're going to get on to our shack for our shop of sandwiches. And uh, in case you're worried, don't worry. They're going to be weird sandwiches. You know, who knows what kind of sandwiches I'd have made. Probably something weird like peanut butter and sweat pickles. That was for uh, Josh Kimball. He told me I should make my, my grandkids peanut butter and sweet pickle sandwiches, and I wrote it down as sweat pickles. <laughs> Words are hard. All right, so uh, a couple more pieces of brick a brack. So I'm pretty much drawing right on the head of the 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 pens today, as opposed to the the lighter gradation that I'll put down working on the side of the pen. which allows a nice consistency in the value that comes out of the, the ink. So all right. So here's uh here's the first scene which uh, establishes in a junkyard somewhere, which is pretty Pretty easy opening air to really. Or I could, you know, shake it up. Your mom's house. I, I, I don't know. We'll see what uh, what words I decide to put down on there. But there's a, a allowance of space for text up above. That, that works for me. Um, missing. Oh, dear Lord. Please cheese and brainstorm pickle like a murder one. Makes me homestead. <laughs> there you go. Even a virtual one at this point. <laughs> is poutine popular in Canada? Yeah, it's as popular like it is anywhere else, but um, not as popular as Freedom Fries. 
Um, I don't know. Not everybody eats poutine. I can't eat poutine, but uh, I'm sure that uh, Robert, do you eat poutine? Do you eat poutine? Eh? Mais oui. It's not a, the most healthy of of uh, foodstuffs. That's for sure. There's better choices, but I can't. I can't eat it. Didi says, "Loving that drawing, Christopher. Thanks, Didi. Uh, Christopher, I appreciate the Patreon exclusives. Yeah, so that's how we're doing it from now on. Is uh, the weekend one pages that I do are only going to be on uh, the Patreon. Uh, just, I uh, just, I wanted to put some more things on, and just to to beef up." how much we're doing here and thank you very much for all uh, your support there and there's more stuff coming more things coming large things intense amount of work things i'm having a baby no it's not it okay so i just gotta get a little bit more of this information down in here and then uh and then let's move on to a junkie shed. What shall we? You missed uh, earlier on, Robert. The uh, oh, it's a year. It has to be from these fries. Oh yeah, these these fries uh, is um, a place that actually has real poutine, like real. Oh my goodness, I need to take the rest of the day off. That might not be working correctly anymore. Uh, feeling clogged, you know, kind of a poutine that just sort of makes you second guess your choices. These is a uh, fantastic, fantastic food. Okay, Je uh, Justin Stewart's suggestion is junkyard sandwich shop. So, I mean, with with uh, with stuff like this, you know, I really want to just to get it across that. With a story where you're sort of establishing a specific set scenario, try to get that down as fast as possible for people. Given that 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 framing sort of a sense, they know where they are, they know what's going on, and uh, and then just go from there. So uh, I'm going to get into the next image, which is uh, the sh uh, shack, the big old shack that it's at, uh, where our junkyard sandwich shop is. Now, I'm not going to uh, write sandwiches on the, the shack. I'm going to do that uh, digitally, largely because uh, I, uh, I'm having an off day with my, with my illness, and I can't, uh, I can't have my hands really steady enough for, uh, for doing any lettering. So. And, uh, you know, it's got to be out tomorrow. So. Tell you the one thing about uh, you know a shaky hand is that it makes you make uh, marks quickly, <laughs> draw faster. So if I'm shaking a lot, I apologize. I don't talk about it much, but there you get it today. All right, so here's I'm putting another dilapidated vehicle in front of the shed and then uh, I want uh, to um, sort of identify that this is where we're going into next right is poutine popular in Canada it's in <laughs> that's just worth going blind for <laughs> uh, oh there you go uh, in the land of the blind the one uh, one-eyed man is king um, as a foreigner to Canada, he's English. As a foreigner to Canada, the gym is more popular than other fry options like sweet potatoes, at least in Ontario. Yeah, sweet potatoes is a second to poutine and then traditional uh, fries, or as you guys call them, freedom fries. Those are, uh, those are uh, actually third in Ontario. People like, if McDonald's has poutine, it's popular. That's, that's always the easiest way to gauge um, 
a, a, a food choice in a region is that if it's carried by McDonald's, it's popular. Like if you want to go to McDonald's in different parts of the world and get certain certain McDonald food, it's not happening because they're catering to the sensibility of that region. So some of their their uh, menu just isn't at these other locations because you know they're not going to sell anything there. But poutine, it's in O Canada. Huh? All right, so I started cutting in the, this is our, our fancy uh, sandwich shop. It's just carved out of the side of a barn. Uh, hope you feel better, Chris. Thanks, Jim. No, he's working on it. We'll watch uh, the rest later. Christopher, feel better. Oh, thanks, Diddy. You guys are so nice. Um, Diddy says, later on. Later, Diddy. Bye. Bye for now. Thanks for coming out. Um, yeah, there's certain foods that uh, you'll see are popular in this place and, and never heard of in others. Like, you know, I, there's no borscht isn't on the menu at McDonald's here in Ontario. No matter how many times I've asked. Have you guys got any borscht? Um, what? I don't even know what that is. What do you want already? Just get a cheeseburger. Yep. Da, 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 closed artery. All right, so I'm putting the planks of shack old shack wood. This is bus wood. The bus wood on a barn made entirely of shack. Take a look here. Here's some wood. That's why you guys come here is for the shack impressions. All right, so I'm cracking open the door. Best door, it's all wide open. People can go outside. Ari Spears does the best shack impression, bar none. He, uh, he has a lazy eye. <laughs> or at the very least, he can make his eye go lazy like Shaq. So like, There's a voice with me, Jack. <laughs> I can't do it. But his eyes go inside. <laughs> like, How are you that good? Chris is indestructible. If the world... Ended in fire and bloody walk out with damp boots and singed hair. Oh, yeah, and coloring pencils. <laughs> Robert, where in Canada are you? Where in the world is Robert then? He's uh, 45 minutes away. 23 seconds away by how fast he rides on his bike. Jim is in uh, California. If you need to go to his place, you go on the 105 and you turn at the 2 and then you just take the off ramp and stop if you can and get strawberries from that guy. That's all I know about California is everybody talks about the roads. And in Canada, we all talk about our satisfaction with our politicians. All right, so let's put an old sign up here and uh, I'm going to have our old sign leaning. I like the idea. I don't know if you've ever been to old, anybody that's watching, if you've ever been to old antiqueries and i'm not talking about oh you know boutique antiqueries i'm talking about the ones that are on a side road that you're not entirely sure you feel safe about there's kids that sit on the porches going dung, 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 on, on banjos that just make you drive faster and uh and you go to one of those places and as soon as you go on the property person goes what are you looking for <laughs> hey that's uh that's that's the kind of antique place I'm talking about where they prop up a a sign for their uh their sandwich shop with an old broken down dilapidated you know movie theater sign that's leaning on a car
There we go. Uh, Joshua Tree is my spiritual home. <laughs> He's telling me he lives in the North Pole. I do. He wouldn't lie. Mm -mm -mm. You should see him bounce owls on his lap in December. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, even, not even putting that up. Okay, so here's me drawing our, our big old hunk of junk sandwich shop. Let's put some junk in the way of it and uh you know i think that the more i can put just some random material just sort of sitting around it tends to dress the set as it were because you get to walk around all this stuff to go to the sandwich shop you wouldn't even know it was there Community service at this point. <laughs> community service, it means me pressing my face up against windows of businesses downtown and just breathing every day. Hey, hey, what are you guys doing in there? Hey, hey, everybody. Hey, hey. Give me some pizza. That's my, that's my service downtown. That's what everybody does in downtown London. Hey, are you got a pizza? Okay, so here's our next image. Um, I like the, to rough it out in one tonal value. Like, one of the things I'm going to be doing with the jelly plate today is uh, I'm going to print white images on it, uh, black paper, so that I can use that surface for doing uh, a drawing with white pen. And so I'm really excited about that. I know nobody else is. But I'm, I'm really looking forward to that because I just want to explore any, any of these avenues that can come together because of this, this tool. It's all about plan. There's, uh, there's people that have this notion of they who have the most toys win. And then there's those people that, you know, utilize said toys and I'm a guy who really tries to, you know, capitalize what I can get out of my tools. And so I tend to use things somewhat unconventional, but, you know, they do a job. Like if uh, you ever have a door that hangs incorrectly, I fix that with pliers. Like I know things, it doesn't make sense from some people to others, but there's so many things outside of a box that anything's, and that, you know, and you have this expectation of this is how you fix that. And then you can just go, what are you doing? Just do this. And you, you only come across those things by experimentation. I didn't have a hammer. So the one time I had to, fix a, an off balance door with the pliers and I only use pliers now because it just the doors never hung as good as it does now when you've got signs they make a mess out of everything it's that thing about large adult young men in a household is that they don't close anything without slamming it so you learn to fix things all right, so there's our next junker in front of our sandwich shack. And then I'm going to do uh, one more tight image here. Now, I've carried this drawing all the way up to the top of this uh, space. And I haven't done so here, but that's because that's this space here is... The intention is to it digitally to put down a lighter washed white in the background and so these these will be the same the same height so so here's our door 
And uh, I'm going to draw a close up on this sign and just a second. Yeah, I've, uh, I've, I don't know what I've been doing. It's almost like a perfect storm right now where I've got all these different tools running out left, right, and center. You know, paint uh, markers and, and, and pens and, and all of them. It's just at the same time, I've all decided now is when we all run out of ink or paint or whatever is in them. It's almost like at the exact same time for all of it. Why, I could just have a fuss. Oh my God. I'm missing stuff, and I'm sorry for that. Uh, my wife won't go back to the States, but one day I would love to ride the Mojave again. Weirdly, I love the desert. Joshua Tree is beautiful. Yeah, the Mojave Desert. It's, uh, I mean, except for all the, the noise and the people that are there. That's a good place to go if you, you don't want to be too compacted. All right, so uh, next panel is a tighter shot on the sign. And if that doesn't uh, walk people into our narrative, I don't know what will. I don't know. So I'm really, I'm really pleased by what this this textured surface affords me to be able to to use in, in the illustration uh, process. So now because I've closed in all of these burnt out empty bulb spots, I uh, I want to make sure I've the reason that I've tightened in on this image is specific peeling so I can show that a bunch of them are are, are more clearly burnt out. So Jen were here, she'd say, ruler, ruler. I used to like that guy's show. I don't know if people are familiar. The guy from Ferris Bueller says, Bueller, Bueller. Is, um, his name is Ben Stein. And uh, he had a program at one point called When Ben Stein's Money. And he was brutal. He was so brutal. And the final round, you had to compete against him in a trivia contest. It's like, that's not fair. That's not fair. Oh, nice try, Jerry. You didn't get that correct at all. And so, it, you know, oh, I'm shaking in my boots. I'm very concerned about their capabilities for trivia. <laughs> you don't believe it. All right, so here is the... Close up shot on the sign. The wonderful thing about uh, the next part of my creative process and utilizing the uh, the capabilities that I'm presented with uh, Photoshop is that I can change the scale of panels. And if I decide that there's too much space for this panel and not enough space for that. I can equalize the three of them, or I can transition those around on uh, the surface in order to have the right rhythm for my panels for the story beats. And because at the end of the day, that's what it's about. It's not about the pretty picture. It's about telling a story. Telling a story. All right. So I think uh, this afternoon I'm going to do a little bit more of this jelly plane. <laughs> but I'm going to see if I can apply it to a canvas piece that I'm working on over here. Just because it wants to. Okay. So here's following the shadow line that I put down earlier, the earlier panel. And then 
filling in that. And then I'm going to come in with the, uh, the white. So in some instances like this, I'll draw with the white first, and then I'll come in with the black. I don't make a lot of sense. So if anybody, uh, just to reiterate as I usually do, if anybody has a one-page story idea that they'd like to share, please do. Robert, I wrote down the one you, you sent me last night. It's, can you get at that this week? So I'm just putting in some more of this wood background texture here. I'm not making the lines like the perfect, beautiful, straight, clean line. I'm, I'm shaking them up a little bit. And because I want to diffuse the background from the foreground, I'm missing stuff, and I'm sorry for that. Hey, hey, Sierra. Uh-oh, everybody behave. Rachel's here. <laughs> Hi, Rachel. Good to see you. This is uh, Rachel to catch you up. This is... Uh, I showed a bunch of books that you can see in the video if you if you're looking back at that. And uh, this page is one of the results of jelly plating for me. And I'm using the process of jelly plating in order to develop some surfaces to work my pages over top of. So this is one of those results. Uh, what is the question of the day today again, Jim? I'm trying to think of what it was without having to scan back. Just scan back, Chris. I can't. I'm lazy. So I'm just putting in these few bulbs as well as the dead receptacles. Perfect name for a punk band, by the way. Onions have become sentient. Or try oh, i got to write that down, Philip. I'm sorry. Onions <laughs> of all the things. Are you making a sandwich? <laughs> Become sentient. You just had that ready to go. And are trying to take over the world. The world. Oh. Philip Chandler, the handler. Philip Chandler. All right. Put that in the book. It's over there and buried. But I will put that in the book today. Put that on my ruler. I'll never lose it. And there you go. It's true. He was he was on a, making a sale. I was chopping onions. Well, be careful. They'll try to get you. Um, what was I working on? Wait. So I'm applying the, the white in the background and these soft lines as opposed to the more deliberate foreground white that I want to jump out just a little bit more. The nice thing about uh, a, a messy background, like I, I use a lot, a mixed media background, is that it presents you with an intermediate value. Now, is it I ideal and flat and smooth and solid, solid area? No, but it, it can work that way. It's worth exploring. Same as the colored piece of paper works as one value in and of itself. But if you're going to be drawing in contrast, you know, positives and negatives, black and white on your page, then immediately the, the color of, of set page becomes the intermediate value. I've got the I've got that written down now, Phil. Thank you for today's suggestion. That's very nice. Anybody else has suggestions? You're always welcome to throw them at me. We'll try to get them as soon as we can. Uh, Thursday is three prompt Thursday, but other than that, the other days I'm I'm working from suggestions that people give me. Monday through Friday, and you'll get to see the results the very next day. Well, I'm sorry, I, I got to correct that because I, it's not like I jump on every new suggestion that comes in. I don't leave them. I, I, I attack every suggestion. I don't want to run away from anything, but 
but I might not be doing it next. As soon as it, here it is, do it tomorrow. Well, we've I've got a list of things I'm trying to catch up on. So now do it now. Do it now, monkey. All right, so I'm just pushing this value in here. And uh, I think I'm still going to have to come in with that, that pen. We have someone new in the room today. So say hi to Michael. Hi, I'm Michael. He is somewhat ghost-like, just floating in the background. Oh, my God, is he a ghost? Welcome aboard, Michael. Thanks for coming on out. It's Mike, Michael, has she got something on you? Is she making you watch this? Just blink if you're in danger. Oh, that's not going to work here. Um, snap. That's nah, still not going to work. <laughs> ah! Welcome aboard, Michael. I'm a little weird. Hmm. All right, so this sign, so the intention is this. The suggestion is junkyard sandwich shop. So in this top third of a page, this is giving me the opportunity to develop up some of these uh, directions I'm taking in, uh, in the story. And so what I've done is I've drawn the junkyard. I've moved in to a closer shot of the kind of ramshackle building, the shack here that... Uh, the sandwich shop is located in and then if that's not clear enough for you <laughs> because it's not for some folks then i've tightened in on the sign that's this dilapidated assembly here and so that you can read the sign that is going to say sandwich so that's helpful i, I know it's i'm trying to be helpful that's why my friends call me mr whispers all right yeah, welcome back. And then Richard's saying hi to everybody else. That's very nice you coming out, Michael. Michael, if you have a one-page story idea or suggestion, please feel free to put it in the chat in the comments. And uh, and then we'll make a one-page story out of it as, you know, as soon as I'm able. I've got a few I'm going through, so I can never promise everybody, yours is next. I don't do them in specific order. I just flip through the book, and as I see something that stands out, yeah, I'll do that. Sure, whatever. And the reason that I do it that way instead of a plan, this day will be this, this day will be this, and so on and so forth, is I like the spontaneity of jumping on the idea as I see it. I lost my note for the suggestion Justin gave me on Friday that I'd said, well, you, you know, I'll do it on Monday. And uh, so I found it during the dream, I think, at the beginning here, just before it. So Junkyard Sandwich Shop is, is the page we're working on today. Uh, Robert, I'm sh not sure I met you yet. If I had met you before, blame it on an old lady. Um, Robert lives in a town where Stop and Tom wrote a song about his back curtain whenever he hears the name of the town. Stop and Tom, folks. Canadian legend. He used to put a piece of plywood under his feet on the stage when he was performing because he always kicks his his, his cowboy uh, boot. He kicks his heel to keep time. And he'd wear a hole through the plywood. So they put the plywood on stage so he would stop wrecking stages where he's performing in towns. But, uh, he's, uh, he wrote that, the good old hockey game is the best game you can play. And the best game you can play is a good old hockey game. Real deep stuff. This all of his songs tend to be about Canada and Canadian places. So, what do we got? Michael has suggested an Egyptian pack rat for your one pager. All right, all right. Dude. Is it just Michael, or is it Michael got a a, a full name? I just want to know who to put down for the suggestion. I'll just put Michael. Has he got an initial for his last name? Michael Flanky Gold Medina. All right. So uh, we've got through our shots so that now we're moving into the interior. And 
you know, there we go on our, our page. What are we at? We're at 124. I tend to go uh, an hour and a half here. Um, and I, I just want to check messages because I've got to go and pick my one son up from uh, from his job. And we're going to go and have a bite to eat with him there. You know, yum, yum, tum, yum, yum. Okay, so uh, I'm going to pull in now. Let's see. So we got the sign, and then now I want to put the counter up. So I'll just wrap this in just to show people where this is going. Next up, that's where I'm doing it up off the panel. I think you really drew those lines. I think you had a magic elf to them. We didn't see it. Nobody here saw that. And so it's a rough, rough construction in this place. And I'll put some stools up. So we're looking at uh, a really worn out 1950s era diner inside said shack. So I'll put some of those stools up. And still have the foot kick that went around the outside. So this is just a case of thinking about 1950s diners and, and trying to think of all those little parts that you remember from when you looked in there. Sometimes we just have to close our eyes and think about those things uh, if we want to draw. Them. And um, you keep all that sort of stuff in your card catalog upstairs there. We're in the attic? No, in your head. Well, can I just keep them in the attic? So there's our, our stool here up at the counter. We'll, we'll draw a few of them. What are we at? Okay, uh, he has a whole last name. Sounds like Tone, but it's really Thon. Oh, there we go. So I'm right now. A whole last name. I had a brother named Thumb. Uh, apparently, he stayed on this house when picking tobacco. Chris, neighbor has a picture of him performing on the porch. I remember that. We found the building. Remember? I uh, love the jelly plate. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. This is uh, a lot of fun. I showed some of the the surface results that I've got for doing pages on top of, and I, the pages that I did this weekend that I've shown on my my Patreon and uh, Substack pages um, are they have jelly plate backgrounds. This is the the backgrounds on those pages that I used, and uh, but now I'm I, I've got got some more done that I'm going to be using these fun textures and and just to. Uh, uh, and I figured out how to do it far far more effectively. So, you know, I really enjoy these results. It looks like like a a photo studio print, like a silk screen print. When you get once you get that rhythm of it, I can't get over it. So, but uh, I'm using it for backgrounds. So, because I'm a messy guy, I'm a messy guy. Ooh. <laughs> All right. So this is putting in the. The counter area here and uh, trying to get that down. I want everything to look like junk, so I'll play with that a lot. But there's a pie stand on the corner and, or a snack stand or whatever, some sort of treat. Probably cookies. And uh, we'll just get this shaped up and, and the idea of it being a mess like uh like like you can put th uh, little bits in like this into so this is this printed image that's on the side of the board that's on the counter the idea here is that this counter is built out of random pieces of wood and so this is an old seven seven up sign that is now serving as uh part of the counter him hocked into the counter so I'm, I'm gonna do a little bits of things like that so too much drawing not enough cat con <laughs> cat cam yeah I, no cats are in here i shampoo back in my floor in my studio and uh this is no go zone for the whole afternoon in case that vacuum thing comes back so so there'll be no cat cam today So 
saga. I like the idea of the sort of, uh, what's it called? Uh, steampunk, cyberpunk, you know, these different aesthetics where it's just a lot of retreaded surfaces and goods in, in those uh, tools and, and vehicles and, and the design of pretty much everything in those environments is all complex and hardly intelligible. Like if you watch, uh, well, you, we'll use Blade Runner as an example. If you watch Blade Runner and you realize that the street signs aren't the same, they've got different street signs from different places in order to, and they're like the street lights. Uh, the one street light here, the next street light down the way is hung upside down from it. <laughs> Just crazy. That's how you populate a space. I love that sort of stuff. What are we at now? Uh, hey there, Rachel. Sorry, making much good time. Oh, okay. That's very nice. Yeah. Takes us a minute to catch up on all the highs. It's nice when people say hi, though. I like that. I'm putting some shadow under this counter. I'll put a little bit of shadow on that sugar. So I always have this sort of loose cutoff as I'm drawing that is rather nondescript, I realize. It's not very clearly defined like a box has been drawn, but you know, I pull things up to this line and and that's where they're at. So here is our our countered area. Miss some stuff again. Uh, Chris, I've missed a few episodes. Did you ever do Jim's suggestion of drawing yourself drawing into infinity? I did last week. Yep, I did. Thanks for asking, Philip. It's uh, it's uh, ad, fini uh, ad infinitum. It's the page not from last week. Uh, a denier is not a Canadian diner. It is a typo. Given <laughs> 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 uh, that, that's not sure why given Christopher's not. <laughs> oh. oh my goodness! Philip is making a salad. Isn't it? Cob salad, which does not require you to throw an entire piece of corn on the cob in it. Just saying. It's called a cob salad, but that's not what it means. It's not what it means. You can if you want, though. You don't let anybody tell you how to make your salad. All right, so I'm going to... play with the space and, and throw some shadows around. just because I want to have a lot of unnecessary clunky messiness in this. I have a friend in the U.S. who keeps trying to correct me when I type the word theater. You have, nobody, you have no idea how many times I've been uh, given a hard time with the word color. Color. Spelled color wrong, buddy. No, I didn't. See, here's the floor which doesn't follow the line of if you've got a repurposed space the rooms are often run against the way that the floors are put down and the like oh my goodness Japanese Italian Mexican omelet here with guac and toast on the side oh my gosh yes may we often correct it on something there we go well they don't understand how we work here in Canada they're 
Prime Minister Bonham and everybody always traveling around in their snowshoes and skidoos, you know. So I don't have to draw in the entirety of the third chair. But we know that the third chair is there now. Because we've already established this sort of rhythm. We cheat this spot on the page. Okay, so uh, i got to finish the topic, but I'll get to that in a second. I just want to wrap up one more little piece of it, and then I... Uh, Closing thoughts like Jerry Springer. That's what I should do. Hey, life is hard sometimes. We all know it. <laughs> Jerry Springer. The guy died, man. A lot of people like that dude. Apparently, he was considered the last good mayor of Chicago. It's not a nice way to call somebody because it's just sort of diminishes everybody that follows him. It's the last good mayor we had. <gasps> what? No. Mayors are sensitive. Can't be just dissing them like that openly. <laughs> in this episode tonight we meet a number of different people from the low income communities that are that just legally found out they're their own parent how in the hell does any of these shows make sense so there's the floor going in Just enough lines to make it pop. And, oops, I'm so sorry. I didn't have that in camera. I apologize. And I'll put in the 7 up. I like that a little bit. Just a couple little elements while we're here. All right. Where are we at? Okay. It is 3.37, so I'm going to have to wrap up. Um, thanks, everybody, for coming out today. I'll get this finished tonight and, and uh, text it and scan it and the whole business and uh, and get this posted for tomorrow. Uh, if you got a one-page idea or suggestion, please feel to put it in the comments below this video because the chat's almost over, and uh, or on the comment on any of the other social things that I put out there. And um, I hope you have a great day and a lot of fun. If you... I talked about a jelly plate at the start of uh, at the start of the old session, and uh, if look into these, they are a measurable fun, and they make you look crafty with not a lot of effort. So, you know, like uh, Miss Jackson says, be crafty if you're nasty, something like that. Okay, that's it for me today. Thank you everybody for coming out. I appreciate everybody doing so. Thank you for my supporters and patrons and all of you that are. Uh, making this such a fun, explorative journey in storytelling for me. Thanks, guys. I'll see you tomorrow at 2 p.m. EST. Have a good night.